Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Tohid, and today I'm here with another amazing topic, the three stages of systematic review. Welcome back. The three stages of systematic review. If you are a new student who is learning to write systematic review, or if you have been given a task by your supervisor to write a systematic review, and you had done it before, but with a team, but now this time it is your responsibility as the first author, then this video is for you. This video will help you tremendously in accomplishing your goal, in completing your systematic review. So let's begin. There are three stages of systematic review, and we'll talk about all three stages in this video. So what are those stages? So first thing first is you should know what are those stages. So stage number one is the planning stage. Stage number two is the data collection stage or search strategy stage. The third stage is the writing stage and you begin actual writing. So now we will talk about each of these stages in detail. Stage one, what do you do in stage one? Stage one is the planning phase. Of planning stage. Here you will plan your paper. You cannot accomplish anything without a plan. So the first thing first is to take a decision that yes, you will do it. You have taken a decision now that you want to write a systematic review. So don't quit. Now you have taken a decision. So finish what you have started. Now the second thing is remove the mental barrier. Remove the mental barrier that is stopping you from completing any ta task or any accomplishment. How do you remove that barrier? Say out loud, do this exercise, say out loud every day, as many times as you can. I would say, say it 10 times, that I can write my systematic review. I can write my systematic review. I can write my systematic review. And further, say this as well. I write wonderful sense. Uh, I write wonderful systematic reviews. I write wonderful systematic reviews. I write wonderful systematic reviews. This is an exercise that will make your subconscious mind believe that yes, you do write sensational systematic reviews, and you will see your mental barrier will remove automatically. Do that exercise, and now start to work on your paper. Now, the next thing you need to do is decide a topic. So, how do you decide a topic? When I started my career and my first paper was given to me to write, it was something that I did not like at all. I did not love it. So I could not finish it. I still haven't finished it. Can you believe that I still haven't finished it? The reason was that I never loved the topic. I never liked the topic. I was not interested in the topic. So always make sure you don't make the same mistake as I did. Don't select a topic that you are not passionate about. Always select something that you're passionate about. Now, how do you know what you're passionate about? What do you love the most? What topic, what subject, what field you love the most? Think about it. What do you like to read about? What do you like to watch a lot? What do you want to think about? What do you talk about most of the time? That is actually your passion. And that should be your topic. And you will see, you will do wonders. Because the moment I selected the passion I had as my topic for my research article, I started to write wonderful papers and I started to write wonderful um, articles or blogs, but it was all because I selected the topic that I was passionate about. So stay with your passion. Now, the next thing in stage one you need to do is decide your research question. Once you have decided your research topic, the research topic is not the research question because here we are talking about Systematic review. In traditional review or regular narrative review, it's okay. Your research topic can be your research question, but here you need to be more specific. So how do you write a research question? Remember the PICO format, P-I-C-O, PICO format, or another format is P-E-C-O, PECO format. So what is that? P stands for population of problem. I for intervention. C for comparison group or control group, and O for outcome. So your research question should have all of these four things. Then it will be a wonderful research question. But 
because there is an intervention here, I for intervention, right? So that means it is a systematic review related to clinical trials, but it is also possible to write a systematic review of obs observational studies. So yes, you can do an observational study, a uh, systematic review of observational study. So then your research question will be PECO, PECO, P for population or problem, E for exposure. Now here, remember in observational studies, in the observational studies like cohort studies, you have exposure. So exposure, E for exposure, C for comparison group or control group, and O for outcome. So yes, you can write a research question according to PICO or PACO format. And then there are S and T as well. That means the setting and the time. You can add some time into it, some time limit, and you can also define the setting. Is it inpatient? Is it outpatient? Is it the community setting? So you can, you can decide further. S and T are optional, but PICO is the main, main thing that you need to keep. Now, once that is done, your research question is done. Congratulations. Now, next, next thing would be, the next step would be define your inclusion exclusion criteria. Yes, you should define your predetermined inclusion exclusion criteria. What is an inclusion exclusion criteria? You decide what to include and what not to include. That's it. You can decide what kind of studies you want. Usually people decide last five years of studies or certain gender specific studies like just male studies or just female studies or just children's studies. So you can decide what kind of studies you would like to keep. Nobody will ask you why you chose this kind of inclusion exclusion criteria because it's your paper. You are the boss of your own paper. So you decide your inclusion exclusion criteria. Don't worry about it. Nobody will criticize you. Nobody will ask you why you did it you are just showing to other researchers in the future that this was my inclusion exclusion criteria. So now they know what to focus on. They will focus on something else that your inclusion exclusion criteria did not have. So they will focus on probably last 10 years instead of last five years. They will focus on male studies if you focus on female studies. So yes, it's okay. Inclusion exclusion criteria can be, can be, your own choice. So don't worry about it. Don't think a lot of students ask me this question. How do I know my inclusion exclusion criteria is right? There is no right and wrong inclusion exclusion criteria. Don't worry about it. Just write it down. The future scientists just want to see what area you focused on so they can focus on something else. That's it. So don't get scared. And how do you decide your inclusion exclusion criteria? I can tell you some ideas. Focus on your research question. Your research question will serve as a navigation, a GPS navigation, right? For when you're driving a car, you use GPS navigation. So use your research question as a GPS navigation. That will help you and guide you till the end. So your inclusion exclusion criteria can be defined by looking at your research question. So always keep looking at your research question. Don't remove your focus from your research question. Now, once that is done, is there any other way to decide inclusion exclusion criteria if you're still confused? Of course, look at other people's previously published papers related to your topic. What kind of inclusion exclusion criteria they have focused on, how they focused on, look at five, six, maybe 10 papers, full papers, see the inclusion exclusion criteria, learn from it. You can get ideas from that paper. Once you have inclusion exclusion criteria ready, your stage one is almost done, but it's not fully done. Now, the next thing is you register your protocol. So you were actually at the same time when you were planning, you were writing your protocol. You were writing your plan down on a separate sheet, separate piece of paper. When you wrote it down, you submit it to websites such as Prospero. Prospero website will register your systematic review. It's optional, but many people do it. So if you would like to do it, go ahead and do it. You will learn more. And uh, once you register your systematic review on Prospero, then you can move to the next stage that will be stage two. Now let's begin stage two. Stage two is the search strategy or the data collection stage. So what do you do now? Now you decide your databases. Where will you search data? Now remember, always choose multiple databases. What are the multiple databases you can choose? What do we mean by databases? Databases are simple websites where you can find data, where you can find previously published papers. Because a systematic review is a review article, you will combine previously published papers and get information from those papers and you write one paper. 
That's it. This is what systematic review is. So you need to go to different databases. Now, what databases you will search? The most common, the first one, if you are a medical student, a doctor or a healthcare student, then PubMed. Of course, PubMed. If you are a clinician of any sort, PubMed is the king, is number one. And PubMed is an interface to Medline. So you have Medline taken care of by PubMed. How many citations they have? They have like 22 million publications and it's increasing day by day so 22 million citations probably more when you are watching this video there will be probably more a few years down the line so 22 million as of 2021 and this is the biggest database you can say right so yes you can collect data from pubmed but don't just rely on pubmed always try to choose multiple databases what are other databases just search Google it, names of electronic databases, and it will give you the list. But I can still tell you some names. PubMed Central. Yes, PubMed and Medline is number is one. They are together. Second one is PubMed Central. The third one is Embase. Fourth one is Cochrane Library. Fifth one is PsycInfo. Sixth one is Scopus. Seventh one is, seventh one is uh, ScienceDirect. And the next one can be Web of Science. So there are so many. SNAL, there are so many databases, but I just mentioned the most famous names. So you can use choose five or six of these databases. I would say five, and you can now move forward. Once you have selected your databases, now you move forward and start your data search. But remember, on PubMed, you will not just rely on regular keywords to search your data. On other databases, you will rely on keywords, but on PubMed and Similar databases like Sanal, you will have to use control vocabulary. Yes, you can watch my other video on control vocabulary, the mass search strategy. I have mentioned that very um, comprehensively. You can watch it. It will help you. But I can just give you a brief highlight here that on PubMed, you don't just rely on regular keywords. You will have to rely on both mesh keywords and regular keywords. In other databases, you just rely on keywords. So always decide your keywords and your mesh keywords on PubMed and you collect data. Now, each database you will search one by one with the inclusion exclusion criteria that you already defined, you will find certain papers. So on PubMed, let's say you found 100 papers in the last five years on certain topic. Now on uh, Medline, sorry, on uh, of course Medline is same as PubMed. So PubMed Central, you found 1,000 papers and X, Y, Z, and uh, Scopus, you found 50 papers. So finally, you found like 2,000 paper or papers all together, including all five databases. Now, what do you do? You have those papers, 2,000 papers. Of course, there are different databases, so you will have some duplicates, right? So now you remove duplicates. Now, once you have it, you remove duplicates, you can remove duplicates electronically, and you can also remove duplicates manually by Excel, although Excel is also a software. So uh, you, can, you can use Excel or you can use uh, any reference manager software to remove duplicates. Once you remove duplicates, your screening begins. Now you start screening your papers. Now, screening is a process that is done by two people. Remember, always, screening is a process that is done by two people, you and your second author, mostly. And if necessary, there will be a third person as well. You can add third person. The more people you involve, the better your paper will become. So now how do you do, do the screening? The first screening is the screening of records. That means screening of titles and abstracts. So you and your second author will look at the abstracts after the duplicates are removed. Let's say you have 500 papers left. Now you are looking at those 500 papers, just titles and abstract quickly. Titles and abstract, titles and abstract, titles and abstract. And you are seeing if there is any irrelevant paper. You remove the relevant ones and you keep the relevant ones. And you give the same task to your second author and the second author and you finally decide that, okay, you said, okay, 450. Your second author said 460. So always go with the higher one. So 460 final papers are left after the screening number one of titles and abstracts, the record screening. Once that is done now, the report screening begins. That means the full text article screening. Now you will do full text article search of these 460 papers that were left. So not all the papers will have full papers available. So whatever you can find, let's say you could only find 400 full papers. And both of you now, you and first author will separately start looking at full papers and you will see if they are relevant. First one, you read the full paper, you said it is irrelevant. Second one, irrelevant. Third one, relevant, 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 relevant. And finally, you found out that, okay, 80 papers are ex exactly relevant to my topic. 
but your second author said no 81 papers so always go with the higher one and you choose 81 papers and usually you resolve this disagreement with mutual consensus or by involving a third person so once that is done you have done your screening process so congratulations your screening is done but you are still not done yet now once you are done with that once screening is done the next thing is the quality appraisal you check the quality of the articles that are left yes you apply the quality assessment tools and you check the quality that means you are looking for the bias and you remove the studies that had bias or had risk of bias risk of bias actually we are looking at risk of bias remember that and once you found the studies with risk of bias you remove them you kept the studies with lesser risk of bias that means quality good quality studies some people call it good quality studies so yes you keep the good quality studies and once you have the total number let's say 40 studies finally left and now you extract the data by using data extraction form you can download that from google or you can create your own data extraction form once that is done your stage 2 is done congratulations now let's move to the third stage the third stage is the writing stage and let's begin writing now how do you begin writing you make sure you open prisma checklist prisma 2020 prisma checklist it has 27 points follow it and make sure you cover all the points while writing your systematic review that are mentioned in the prisma checklist 2020 and also draw prisma 2020 flow chart i delivered a lecture before and you can watch my video on prisma flow diagram so once you do that your paper will be ready so make sure what you include you will have an abstract you will have introduction method results discussion conclusion and then the references and prisma flow diagram and then the title so make sure everything is according to prisma checklist you will have introduction around 15% of the full paper so always decide how long your full paper would be i would say 3000 to 5000 words is the most commonly used length of a paper so you decide whether you want to write a 4000 word or 5000 word or 3000 word so you decided in 15% will be introduction then 400 words for results and 400 for method 400 for conclusion remaining is discussion and always bring some tables and figures of course to make your paper prettier and interesting and make easy make it easy for the readers because not everyone will have energy to read everything so they want to see figures and tables to understand your paper and of course prisma flow diagram and if it becomes a meta analysis then go with statistical data analysis process but we will talk about that in another video so this is how you complete your systematic review and these were the three stages of systematic review watch this video again listen to it carefully and take notes learn it apply it and write your systematic review and keep learning and keep watching thank you have a good day